Hello, my name's Ricky Murdoch. Hello, my name's Che. My name's Matt. Okay, we're here today at the Queensland Police Service Dive Unit. The diving unit conducts diving operations in accordance with Work Health and Safety Act and Work Health and Safety Regulation 2011. Um, we use the code of Australian Standard 2299 as an uh, occupational diving code of practice. Um, the roles of the police diving unit include the underwater recovery of bodies and the underwater recovery of vehicles, weapons and property and exhibits using effective searching techniques under, using the underwater metal detector and also uh, lifting apparatus. My name's Che, I'm from Police Divers, and I'm going to talk to you today about the diving equipment we use. Okay, this is our standard scuba set. It's a bit different from the standard scuba set that you'd use on the weekend to dive a shipwreck. Um, the main difference with police diving is when we go down diving, 90% of the time we have no visibility, so we can't tell when we're going to run out of air. So to counter that, we have two cylinders. So we'll breathe down our main cylinder, when we feel the restriction, when we run out of air, then we'll switch, we'll switch our gauge and that'll go to our reserve cylinder. And that's our signal to surface, so that way we never run out of air. Um, also, when we dive, we use a full face mask. This enables us to talk to the surface through our communications um, and it also prevents uh, contaminated water getting in our mouth and our nose. Um, that's our SCUBA set. SCUBA stands for Self-Contained Underwater Breathing Apparatus. Another type of diving set we use is SSBA. That stands for Surface Supplied Breathing Apparatus. Um, that's basically when the diver will go down, it'll have these hoses. You'll notice there's three colours. One supplies the air, one supplies the communications to the diver, and the other one supplies its a pneumo gauge, so we can tell how deep the diver is so, without having to ask him. Um, they're the two types of diving setups we use. We've got an array of wetsuits we use from the summer conditions, uh, very thin 1mm wetsuits through to the standard 3mm wetsuits and we've got some 5mm and even some dry suits for contaminated water or for really cold water out west in the middle of winter. Um, you can see here we've got a series of tow chains. Um, this is for recovering vehicles, that's a pretty standard part of our job. And Another essential part of our job is all the lifelines and different um, signal lines we use. Um, every dive job we go to, we carry oxygen and defibrillators and we'll carry bulk oxygen over here. Essential part of any dive operation. Um, as well as the diving gear, the dive unit has a number of sonar devices. We use the sonar devices to basically map out large chunks of a, an ocean or a riverbed so we don't have to dive them. So we're looking for a, anything, a body, a car, a plane, we'll put the side scan in, we'll tow it down that part of the river or that, over that part of the reef. It maps out the ocean floor in three dimensions, like 3D image, so we can quickly clear large expanses of, of waterways. Um, it's particularly handy up north in rivers when we're looking for vehicles so we don't have to put a diver in because there may be crocodiles or sharks in those rivers. So it's, it's very good to locate something large in, in that instance. Um, the way it works, it sends out sonar pulses from these side panels here. They come back and they're mapped out on our computer screen as a 3D image. So as we tow it along, we tow it at about three to four knots. Um, it basically sends the beams out and maps out the, as I said, the, the riverbed wherever we tow it. Hi, my name's Matt. Um, I first joined the dive unit in 2007 as a part-time diver. Um, at that time my primary role was general duties at Fortitude Valley Station. Um, the role of the part-time diver is, is basically just to assist the full-time diving unit uh, in diving capability. So if they need an extra diver, um, you're available to them. So you always got to be available on call for any sort of emergent jobs. The full-time diver maintains the equipment. Um, the dive unit's role is, is um, it is quite dangerous. The, the reasons um, joining the, the divers, um, I guess it's, it's a personal challenge. I've always had a, an interest, most of the divers have always had an interest in diving, um, interest in water activities and it's in, uh, incorporating those, those challenges and those enjoyments with, with your work life. Um, Obviously, this sort of diving isn't recreational diving, it's, um, it's a lot more dangerous. You are diving in black water. Um, but I guess the reason I joined is, is, is personal challenge and just to um, 
you also need to maintain your fitness. So it's you know maintaining your fitness, um, having that interest in, in diving, and, and just the, the constant challenges of everyday challenges of being a diver in the dive unit. Right, to, so to give you a demonstration of what we do, we can um, head down to the wharf and um, we'll get in a dry suit and show you what it's all about. So what happens before each dive, um, the diver would uh, check all his equipment, he'd build his own uh, scuba set, um, he'd check his uh, Arga full face mask for functionality, um, he'd check his own harness, he'd check his own dry suit prior to uh, donning all the equipment. Um, during the donning drills, which is putting all the gear on, the, the attendant uh, assists the diver getting fully dressed and does all the initial checks on the diver. Okay, he puts the weights in, turns the gas on initially, does all the function tests, for the breathing function tests. Um, once that's completed, the supervisor, um, myself this morning, will go over and do all those checks again. So the checks are done three times, once by the diver himself, once by the attendant, once they're happy they're functioning, the supervisor goes over and does the final checks on the diver before he gets put in the water. Okay, prior to this all happening, um, risk management is done on the dive site. Obviously work under work, um, Works Health and Safety, the Work Health and Safety Act and the Work Health and Safety Regulation. So prior to any dive in any of the uh, environments we work in, um, the supervisor has to come down and do a full risk assessment on the dive site and that has to be signed off by all the divers that are going to be operating and the surface attendants that are going to be operating in, on that site. So this morning what we're going to be doing is searching for a, a weapon. Um, normally, uh, years ago we used tactile search methods. Now to speed up the search, we know it is a weapon um, and it's got metal parts. We'll use a metal detector, an underwater metal detector. That allows us to clear a big area a lot quicker. Um, if we don't find that weapon then with that metal detector, and we've searched that area a couple times, and we have definite good intel that the weapon went in there, we'll resort back to a tactile search digging into the mud. The metal detector can shoot into the mud at least a metre into the mud or into the sand. We get the diver into the water, in the water go. We'll keep the diver on the surface. Diver on the surface indicating well. Diver looks to the supervisor. Okay. Okay, diver leaves surface. Okay, whilst the diver's on the surface, we check for uh, leaks on the diver's set. Diver's on the bottom, May bottom. Okay, the diver here is now is facing in my direction. He's going to his right, so he's moving to my left. And then we're moving in an arc-like search, using the metal detector in front of him. The diver sweats out on the line. I only give him the line I want to control the search pattern from the surface. So I'll just stop the diver, he's, just, he's, he's checked me. He should do nothing now until he gets another signal. The diver's located a firearm. We've got to, we've got to understand that a firearm could be loaded at any time, so and can still function even though it's wet, how long it's been in the water. So the diver's obviously going to hand that weapon up to us in the correct fashion so the barrel's not pointing towards him, not pointing towards us. A large portion of the recoveries we conduct are as a result of unsafe practices on the water. We would like to remind all persons using the waterways to play safe and look out for your mates.